All right, so we're gonna do this thing again. What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're about to take a deep dive into this incredible plugin that you may have already be familiar with, but I promise you've never seen it used like this before. So get ready to uncover the power of Dehancer, a game-changing plugin that has revolutionized the world of color grading. Let's get into it. I remember when I first started grading under film prints, there were a ton of terms that got me tripped up, which left me overwhelmed and discouraged from diving into this topic. And hearing how filmmakers talked about this made me feel like my confusion was due to my lack of experience of shooting actual film. So before we dive into Dehancer, I wanted to give you guys some key terms to look out for when using this technique. This will hopefully clear up some confusion and get you 80% there, which will ultimately lead to better results when using Dehancer. But in order to keep this video concise and shorter, I will briefly explain these points but if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to provide you with that information. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, first things first. Film, lab, print is the same exact thing as shoot, color, convert. Film works with film negative, just like digital cameras work with log video. We then take it to the lab, you know, to DaVinci for color grading, and we convert it over to Rec. 709. This was a process of shooting on film, and it's important to keep this in mind so you can make informed decisions when it comes to processing your film negative or your log image. You see the comparison there? Kodak versus Fuji. Dehancer offers a wide range of film profiles, but when it comes to motion picture imagery, there are really two main players to look out for, Fuji and Kodak. Fuji is a stock that is no longer in production, but many filmmakers and colorists still use it for its, you know, saturated colors and vintage push towards blues and greens and Kodak film is still in production today and usually leans towards a warmer more magenta push negative versus positive this is an easy concept to understand think of negative stock as a log image and your positive as an already converted rec 709 image all right so now that we have cleared up these terms, let's move on to actually exploring Dehancer. What is Dehancer? Dehancer reached out to me and asked for an honest review of their plugin. And I want to clarify that this video is not sponsored, nor am I being paid to promote Dehancer. And everything mentioned in this video is solely based on my own experience and honest opinion. But let me tell you this. Dehancer is, is, is one of those plugins that just simply works. We have incorporated it into various video projects, including commercials, documentaries, short films, and product videos. I mean, it has constantly elevated the quality of our productions. I mean, finally, we have a film emulation plugin that offers us everything we need in one package, including halation, film grain, gate weave, bloom, it has everything to give your footage that authentic film analog look or analog film look. <laughs> Achieving great results with Dehancer is not and has not been difficult, but if you want consistent and outstanding results, then you'll definitely need to keep watching this. How to use Dehancer. Let me take you through the recommended workflow when using Dehancer. First, you're going to want to check your project settings and make sure DaVinci is not color managing your clips. Make sure you turn your timeline color space to Rec. 709 and Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 and your 3D lookup table to Tetrahedral. Okay guys, make sure you color manage your timeline clips. What I like to do is go inside of DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. So I take my source footage, convert that to 
DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, and then my out, I make sure that's coming from DaVinci Wide Gamut and back out to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. This is mostly important in our unique workflow. And I have a video coming out in the next couple of weeks on how we color manage across an entire project. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss that. Create a few nodes, label them exposure, balance, and contrast, and then apply the enhancer after your CST. And now we are ready to build our look. Let's quickly go over the settings that Dehancers offers. Our first group is input. This is where you will put your source material profile. In this case, it would be Rec. 709. The exposure, temperature, and tint comp, I would recommend making adjustments to these settings and nodes prior. Think of them as your in-camera settings. So I wouldn't really touch those inside of Dehancer, but what I would tinker with is the Defrange options. This will help minimize chromatic aberrations that you get from shooting in high contrasty environments with cheap or vintage lenses. I usually enable this because it'll affect your bloom and halation settings later. But don't go too heavy handed because you can get halos around your edges. But if you run into that situation, just dial it on back. Below this, you can find Film Developer. I like to use this when I'm creating my own recipe or when I don't really know the camera profile that I'm shooting in. This section is particularly useful when I'm dealing with cameras that don't have a dedicated profile in Dehancer or some drone profiles that are not standardized like D-Cine-like. Film usually only have 10 stops of dynamic range. And there are some digital cameras like my red here that can shoot 16 plus stops. So to make it all fit and give you a more realistic look to film, you can use this film compression section to compress that signal so you can further manipulate your data down the line. I usually only touch the color density in this section or if I have blown out highlights, you can use this to help give it texture and make it look intentional. Expand and print are probably the most important features other than film profiles. In fact, I recommend setting your black and white point immediately after you select your film profile so you can fatten up the contrast and the midtones later on. Dehancer film profiles usually come with little to no contrast adjustments, which is one thing that I absolutely love about this plugin. It leaves you a ton of headroom to really dial in your creative contrast curve, but you will want to keep an eye out for clipping. So eyes on your histogram, and if you run into a contrasty uh, situation where you're clipping, use the analog limiter to help you with that so you can dial that in. In the print section, you have multiple options and each has its own characteristics, contrast curve, and color to it. But there are three film prints that we haven't mentioned, and that is Linear, Kodak Endure Glossy Paper, and Cineon Film Log. In short, to sum it all up, Use the linear when you don't want a curve on your film or when you're using a positive film. Use a Kodak or Fuji for anything movie stocks and use a Kodak Endura for any other photography stock that's listed above. And if you want a custom creative color adjustment, use a color head down below in the next group. None of these are set in stone. So remember to experiment with different settings and combinations until you find that perfect look for your video that fits your project. With all that being said, let me show you guys how we have been using Cineon Film Log as our print of preference. So while Dehancer does offer a highly accurate Kodak 2383 film print, is not my personal favorite. My preferred workflow within my color managed process is first, I place the answer before and after my Rec. 709 CST. And in the before CST Dehancer node, I ensured that my source is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And this node, I disable everything except for the film profile and its span. I select my desired film profile 
and set my black and white points accordingly. Next, I move to the dehancer node right after my CST and turn off all my settings except for the print. And for the print, I use Cineon Film Log. And to further enhance the cinematic look, I add two nodes and three parallel nodes. I navigate to my LUTs and add either the Da Vinci's native 2383 film look. From there, I alt left click drag to copy the enhancer settings into my next node. I then deselect everything except for the film grain. I copy it over down below and do the same thing but select my halation and I repeat for the last node but select my bloom. And just like that, you'll achieve cinematic goodness. Okay, so I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this, but I have to bring attention to Dehancer as a photo editing app on my iPhone. I'm just like any other filmmaker that's resistant on creating content, especially vertical content, with my phone. But let me tell you, the results I've been getting from this app is just insane. And I would be doing you guys a disservice by not talking about it. It's not your typical Instagram app filter. These looks have taken years of scientific research and everything we talked about in this video is included in this app. But unlike the desktop DaVinci version, it's not just limited to videos. You can do photos as well, which is nuts. I mean, you get everything in the desktop version in a small app from gateway, film breath, I mean, everything. They didn't cut any corners from creating this app. I mean, just this weekend, I flew back home and visited my grandmother's grave for the first time. And it was a quick trip, so I didn't have much time to bring a camera or anything like that. So I took a photo and edited it with the Hanser, and look how incredible it came out. Definitely check it out if you're always on the go and need something fast without sacrificing quality. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more color grading tips, business hacks, and gear reviews. We hope you enjoyed learning about Dehancer and its unique features. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. That's all for now. Stay creative, keep creating, and stay resilient.